Pharma is going to try to take over the world. It's the most powerful lobby in Washington. It's outspending oil and gas two to one. It's paying 50 to 70% of all advertising on your television. All of your news anchors work for pharma. That was never made more clear than what I'm about to show you. I'm going to show you how television works because I come from television. I worked at CBS, as you know. I won an Emmy Award for working on the CBS medical talk show, The Doctors. Before that, I was a producer for The Dr. Phil Show. I know a lot about what I'm talking about, and what I want to show you is, and by the way, when you work on those shows and you are a television doctor or on a panel of television doctors, you have to be really, really careful about what you say. You have to make sure that your data is correct, because the last thing that any television doctor wants to have happen is to get called out for inaccurate information. So believe me, they don't hop on a radio show, they don't hop on a TV show without a team of scientists and a team of producers like me all sitting down and making sure, yeah, Dr. Phil, you can say this, don't say this, this hasn't been proven, this. He gets the okay and he goes ahead. Three of those doctors, Dr. Oz, Dr. Drew, Dr. Phil, all had similar messages when they sat on televisions around the world, really. This is what they had to say. How much damage is the media causing now the way they're covering us? The, essentially, the entire problem we're having is due to panic, not the virus. We need our mojo back. Let's start with things that are really critical to the nation where we think we might be able to open without getting into a lot of trouble. I can't show you an x-ray of depression. I can't show you an x-ray of anxiety. But the fact of the matter is, the longer this lockdown goes on, the more vulnerable people get. And it's like there's a tipping point. There's a point at which people start having enough problems in lockdown that it will actually create more destruction and actually more death across time than the actual virus will itself. This corona thing doesn't worry me it is, at all. It is a press-induced panic. I am angry about it. It is the flu. It's milder than we thought. The fatality rate is going to drop as we identify more cases. The entirety of the problem now is that people are being pushed into bankruptcy. I tell you, schools are a very appetizing opportunity. Opportunity. Uh, I just saw a nice piece in the Lancet arguing that the opening of schools may only cost us two or three percent in terms of total mortality. And you know, that's any life is a life lost. But to get every child back into a school where they're safely being educated, being fed. Uh, and making the most out of their lives with a theoretical risk on the back side. Uh, it might be a trade-off some folks would consider. We need to get industry back, supply lines. I mean, things that we can do without putting a nation at risk. The poverty line is getting such that more and more people are going to fall below that because the economy is crashing around us. And they're doing that because people are dying from the coronavirus. I get that. But look, the fact of the matter is we have people dying. 45,000 people a year die from automobile accidents. 480,000 from cigarettes, 360,000 a year from swimming pools, but we don't shut the country down for that. But yet we're doing it for this, and the fallout is going to last for years because people's lives are being destroyed. And we need to calm down. It's here, it's mild, and the press needs to shut up. It's really getting to be a problem. Those are really bold statements. And by the way, I know everyone has their opinion of television doctors, but I've actually worked very closely uh, in this arena. This is where I come from. I have real respect for these guys. They're not always, you know, on, on the train of thought that I'm on, but I have to tell you that they do their due diligence. And at this point, all three of them are saying, look, we have got to start being smart. You got Dr. Drew, who's a psychologist. You got Dr. Phil, who's a psychologist, saying the ramifications of locking down are so tragic. And by the way, the death rates of other things, and they should have thrown in, I don't know why you have to be like car accidents so far away, Dr. Phil. I would have said if I was ready for you, 640,000 people die of, you know, heart disease every year. 60,000 die of the flu. I mean, these are tangible numbers. Diabetes, cancer, go with actual illness, you know, versus, you know, people driving cars. But we get your point, right? We still drive, we don't shut down the world. All three of these doctors went out of the way to really try and stand up for the American population. Dr. Oz being the only one that is actually a medical doctor um, who, who treats patients. But all of them saying the same thing. This lockdown is going to be more dangerous than the illness itself. We've looked at the numbers. It looks like a flu. Clearly, we are over 
overstating this. We are overstepping this. And Dr. Drew, they're like, let the media have it. Cut it out. You're scaring people. Well, it's interesting. What do you think happens when, when three television doctors that, uh, as I've said before, right, I'm telling you, their paychecks, if they have a television show, they want to keep that television show, they have to answer the pharma. Especially Dr. Phil. I mean, that one I know for sure, because I wrote the interstitials. I wrote all the commercials. We did all of those things. We did it all there to make you afraid of your health so that we could sell drugs for those that were being advertised through commercial breaks. It's for real. And now I have proof for you. These guys, I think we'd all agree, also have gigantic egos, right? Types of guys that really probably don't like to apologize a lot. So it would take a lot to get someone like this to apologize, don't you think? Who would they do it for? Their kids? Their wife? I doubt it. What about pharma? Their boss? What happens if their boss says, you better cut that crap out, you better go grovel, you better bend over and take it right now, you take it back. We can't have those statements out there by the three top TV doctors in the world. Here's how they respond. My early comments about equating coronavirus with influenza were wrong. They were incorrect. I was part of a chorus that was saying that, and we were wrong. And I want to apologize for that. Uh, I wish I got it right, but I got it wrong. What I did not get wrong was every time I took a position, I always said, make sure you listen to Dr. Fauci, because he is the person we must look to. I've realized my comments on risks around opening schools have confused and upset people, which was never my intention. I misspoke. As a heart surgeon, I spent my career fighting to save lives in the operating room by minimizing risks. At the same time, I'm being asked constantly, how will we be able to get people back to their normal lives? To do that, one of the important steps will be figuring out how do we get our children safely back to school. I've gotten a lot of tug tongues wagging by comments I made last night on Laura Ingram's show, so I thought I would follow up on that. Robin and I 100% support the CDC guidelines of quarantine and have been following them, sheltering at home and maintaining social distancing guidelines. I have said 100% I support that we shut the country down to protect what is perhaps a small percentage of those for whom this virus is most dangerous. Listen to your state governors, as I'm going to do, that you abide by their rules to stay at home until we are all happily united. If I offended people's sensibilities last night with my examples, then erase those. Did it work? Did it work? You feel erased? You see how passionate they were about those apologies? They really felt deep down in their heart they made a mistake. Did you tell? I've been saying this from the beginning. I mean, you're going to have to look at these things. You're going to have to look at what makes someone turn around like that. Pharma does. 